Good morning to all our family and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it because this is the day that we can gather together as one family together with our friends here in GCF Northwest. As we start to worship the Lord this morning, I would like for us to take the Psalm of David as our prayer this morning. In Psalm 19 verse 14, David wrote this, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my rock and my Redeemer. I pray that as we worship the Lord, we will surrender our hearts and everything that, uh, that is in us so that we will be acceptable and pleasing to the Lord. Let's worship the Lord together. And let's rejoice, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Good morning, everyone. Let us use this time to sing praises to our God and give Him all the glory. Let's clap our hands. Let me be an instrument to exalt and to extend Jesus' name globally as the waters cover the sea. Open the heavens, O oh Lord, and pour out Your Spirit. Cover the earth with Your glory. Cover the earth with Your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth with Your glory. Cover the earth with Your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven Cover the earth Let me speak what you say Let the sound repair the way Kingdom come globally as the waters cover the sea, open the heavens, O oh Lord, and pour out your spirit, cover the earth with the glory, cover the earth with the glory, cover the earth with the sound of heaven. All of the earth is yours. All of the nations adore you Cover the earth with the sound of heaven Cover the earth You sing, open up the heavenlies Open up the heavenlies let a new sound be released As the waters cover the sea Cover the earth Open up the heavenlies Let a new sound be released As the waters cover the sea Cover the earth Yeah! Open up the heavenlies let a new sound be released As the waters cover the sea Cover the earth Open up the heavenlies Let a new sound be released As the waters cover the sea Cover the earth Cover the earth Cover the earth, cover the earth with the glory, cover the earth with the glory, cover the earth with the sound of heaven. All of the earth, all of the earth is yours, all of the nations adore you, cover the earth with the sound of heaven cover the earth
lollipop offering to our God. Amazing grace, how sweet that sound. Good morning, church. Let's clap our hands and sing praises for our Lord. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and lifts us breathless? In no one wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Who brings our chaos Back into order Who makes the orphan A son and daughter The King of glory The King of glory Who rules the nations With truth and justice Shines like the sun In all of its brilliance The King of glory The King above all kings Sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy Oh, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Sa pagkakataong pong ito, tayo ay taintim na manalangin at idulog ang ating mga sarili sa ating pangunan. Ang puso ko'y tinan 
dulog sa iyo Nagpapakumbaba, nagsusumamo Paghindapatin mo Ikaw ay mamasdan, makaniika at sa'yo ay pumisa. Ang puso ko'y dinudulog sa'yo, nagpapakumbaba, nagsusumamo. Paginda patin mo, ikaw ay mamasdan, makani ka at sa iyo ay pumisa. Noobin mo ang buhay ko'y maging banal mong tahanan, nukno ka ng iyong wagas na pagsinta. Daluyan ng walang hanggang mga papurit pagsamba Maghari ka o oh Diyos ngayon at kailanman Ang puso ko'y dinudulog sa'yo Nagpapangkumbaba, nagsusumamo Paghindapatin mo Ikaw ay mamasdan, makanika at sa'yo Banal mong tahanan Lukno ka ng iyong Wagas na pagsinta Daluyan ng walang hanggang mga Papurit pagsamba Magkari ka o Diyos Ngayon at kailanman Banal mong tahanan, nuklo ka ng iyong wagas na pagsinta. Daluyan ng wala hanggang mga papurit pagsamba, magkari ka o Diyos ngayon. Banal mong tahanan, nuklo ka ng iyong wagas na pagsinta. Daluyan ng walang hanggang mga papurit pagsamba, magkari ka o Diyos ngayon at kailanman. Maghari ka, O Diyos, ngayon at
melody of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. In wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Open up my eyes in wonder Show 
Lord, this is our prayer and commitment. May we be humble and meek. Sisters in GC of Northwest, may I invite you to bow down our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray. Our dearest Heavenly Father, we gather here today in your throne of grace. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, that we can worship you today via online, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for those undeserving gifts that you have provided unto us, Lord. But again, again Lord, we praise you, Lord, because of your undeserving love, Lord. We don't deserve it, Lord, but you gave it to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this wonderful gift that you have provided unto us. Again, Lord, uh, we come to you, Lord, in prayer, Lord, uh, because of these challenging times, Lord, for our brothers and sisters, Lord. Sickness, Lord, that needs healing, Lord. Financial difficulties, Lord. Relationship problems, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, Lord. Please provide a solution for our concerns. We don't know, Lord, but we will always focus on you and you alone. Help us, Lord, to be obedient, to be faithful, Lord, in you. And may we always, Lord, abide by your will. So, Lord, hear our prayer, Lord. Pray for healing, Lord. Pray for a relationship, Lord, to be fixed, Lord. And continue to pray, Lord, for the economy, Lord. Salagang sana masigla ulit ang economy, Lord, ng Pilipinas. Pray, Lord, we continue to pray, Lord, for the employers, employees, Healthcare workers namin, Lord. Mga frontliners namin. Mga businessmen, Lord. Lord, again, we thank you, Lord, for these people, Lord. Talagang working, Lord, day and night, Lord, to provide the services, Lord, and to help other people, Lord. So we continue, Lord, to ask, Lord, to bless them. Lord. We continue to pray, Lord, for our pastor, Pastor Jerry, Lord, as he discussed your word today about judgment, Lord. May you open our hearts, may you open our minds, Lord, through his teaching, Lord. We continue to pray, Lord, na bigyan mo ng wisdom si Pastor, Lord, while discussing this, Lord. And help us, Lord, not to judge other people, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be Christ-like. Again, Lord, we continue to pray for our business meeting. Continue to pray, Lord, for our renovation and construction. And continue to bless people, Lord, uh, who will do the construction, Lord. He will do the renovation. Lord, we pray maging maayos, Lord. At kung may problema man, Lord, Maayos rin yun, Lord. Alam namin, Lord, na ito lahat is all for you, Lord. And we are all excited, Lord, because you have granted us this wonderful gift again, Lord, of a new house or new home, we can call it home, second home for GCF Northwest, Lord. May we continue to pray, Lord, now all people, Lord, involved in this project, Lord, bigyan mo ng wisdom, Lord, and guidance. May we continue to pray, Lord, na may your light shine through us and over us, Lord, that we can make a big difference in this world. May we continue to pray, Lord, to bless the church. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, again, because continue to pray for the leaders as well, Lord. Continue to pray 
to our government, Lord, our president and its officials, Lord. Continue granting them, Lord, the wisdom that they need, Lord. In order, Lord, talagang maalagaan nila lahat ang Pilipinas, Lord, ang taong bayan, Lord. Again, maraming salamat, Diyos, sa lahat ng pagmamahal mo. Sa ngalan ni Jesus, Amen. Morning. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. From the English Standard Version, let's read all together. Judge not, that you be not judged. For the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure used, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your own brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 to 6. May God bless the reading of His Word. Good morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to God's Word through Pastor Jerry Agoncillo. Treating People Fairly from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. A blessed morning to all our family and friends. May I ask you to open your hearts and minds as we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to all of us today. Please keep your Bibles and apps open on our passage in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. Before we go to the text this morning, I want you to know that this passage is probably one of the most misunderstood and misused verses in the Bible, both by the believers and those who are not of faith. In the same way, some people not of faith are offended by Christians and they have branded us as very judgmental. If you do not want to be accused of misusing the Bible and being judgmental to others, please do not memorize a Bible verse without knowing the right context where it was stated and taken from. Much more to teach a passage of the Bible without really studying and having a clear understanding. If you would follow this simple discipline you have the potential not just to be a good student of the Bible, but also a great teacher and preacher of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 reads, Judge not that you be not judged. You might have heard this at least once in your life, quoted and told by someone to you or to someone else many times with an attitude. Or maybe you yourself had also used this verse on someone as a rebuke. Did Jesus prohibit his disciples and believers 
from judging other people? Are we commanded not to make any judgment on anybody about anything at all? Are we just to leave everybody who do wrongs to the hands and judgment of God? These are pretty easy questions to answer with yes or no. But in reality, it is more difficult. How do we really do it and practice right judgment? How do we judge and treat people fairly? When do we have to and need to judge others? I'm glad I'm not the one who will answer all these questions. We refer to the words of Jesus in our passage today to look into the right and proper answers to all your questions regarding this topic. I entitled our sermon today, Treating People Fairly, based on Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. We are continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount, the Kingdom Life Agenda of Jesus, based on Matthew chapters 5 to 7. Shall we pause right now in a word of prayer? Lord God, we are blessed to listen from you once again this morning. Would you touch our hearts and transform our lives as we allow the Holy Spirit to deposit these truths in our hearts today? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember this. Treat people fairly by speaking the truth in love and discerning facts carefully in humility. That is the summary lesson that I would like for us to take to heart this morning. Treat people fairly by speaking the truth in love and discerning facts carefully in humility. In the previous passages, specifically in chapter 6 of Matthew, our Lord Jesus Christ dealt with heart issues among the believers. He primarily corrected their misunderstandings and presented the standard of God for people or believers to truly live in the kingdom of God or under the rule and reign of God in their lives. In our passage this morning, Jesus shifted from the internal issues to relational concerns. He moved from pointing out what's inside their hearts to their hypocritical practices about giving, prayer, fasting, treasures, and their worries to how they treat people fair and square. Jesus taught how his followers and disciples must treat people around them. If you have concerns and difficulties relating with the people God had put in your life, listen attentively to how God will speak to your heart today. This portion of the Sermon on the Mount is one of the most controversial verses in the Gospels because it's also one of the most difficult to interpret. By God's grace and with the help of the Holy Spirit, I will highlight and emphasize three practical principles and will present to you four specific guidelines on treating people fairly. Let's start with the first one. Do not judge others carelessly. Do not judge others carelessly. Let's read verses 1 to 2. Jesus said, Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. To understand what Jesus really meant when he said, Judge not, let's look at the meaning of the word judge. According to Strong's Bible Dictionary, it means to distinguish and to decide mentally and judicially. By implication, to judge means to try, condemn, and punish. It also means to conclude and determine. Also, in his dictionary, Thayer 
define the word judge as follows. To separate, to pick out, select, or choose. To approve and prefer. To be of opinion, deem, and think. To determine, to resolve, and decree. Ordinarily, to judge basically means to assess, evaluate, make a conclusion, and decision. If you put the word of negation not to all these words, Jesus seems to be teaching us not to distinguish and decide mentally and judicially. Jesus seemingly told his disciples not to think, determine, assess, and conclude. Is this what he really meant? Did he command all his disciples and followers not to make judgment at all about anything and anybody? If it is what Jesus thought, then he repeatedly contradicted himself and his commands would be conflicting. For a better understanding, let's look at Jesus' words in the immediate context. He said, you hypocrite, in verse 5. That's a judgment and word of conclusion or condemnation. He mentioned of dogs and pigs in verse 6. He made a distinction and preference to and among other animals. That again is a judgment. In verse 15, Jesus warned his followers about false teachers. He described them as ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. Then he told them to recognize these false teachers by their fruits. If Jesus did command them not to judge or to determine and assess, how will they distinguish the false teachers among them? How then will we correctly understand Jesus' command not to judge? We look at the context. We look at the context. That's how important context is, not just in our study of God's Word, but also on making correct judgment and right conclusions in our decisions. In the previous passages and also in verse 5, Jesus talked about hypocrites and religious hypocrisy. He was commanding his disciples and followers, including all of us today, to not judge others carelessly just like how hypocrites do. They present themselves as better and righteous than other people. They put on a facade, a mask to cover their faults and point out the imperfections only of other people around them. They commend themselves while criticizing others. His warning was if we judge people carelessly and unfairly, we will also be judged the same way. This is one of those few passages in the Bible that implies that our actions directly invite God to do the same to us. The measure we use in judgment will also be used by God to judge us. Our Lord is the God of grace and justice. He wants us believers to uphold His character in our lives by treating people fairly and justly, and not to judge hypocritically and carelessly. How then should we make right and correct judgments? A. Base your judgment on the truth of God's Word. Base your judgment on the truth of God's Word. Focus on the truth. We base our judgment on the truth of God's Word. We use the truth as our standard of judgment, not base it on personalities, what is popular, and definitely not on our own perceptions only. B. Look at the whole picture and listen to the whole story. Look at the whole picture and listen to the whole story. 
Not because we see something and hear something. We should already take that as a whole truth. We have to carefully look at the bigger picture and ask for the whole story before making conclusions and declarations. Treat people fairly by speaking the truth in love and discerning facts carefully in humility. Two, judge yourself first honestly. Judge yourself first honestly. Let's read verses 3 to 5 in our passage. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye? Verse 5, you hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Jesus used a figure of his speech called hyperbole or exaggeration to emphasize a point or important lesson. What is Jesus teaching us in these verses? You will be able to treat or judge people fairly only when you judge yourself first, honestly. I repeat that. You will be able to treat or judge people fairly only when you judge yourself first, honestly. Jesus is pointing out the importance of the integrity and character of his disciples. My family and friends, we can only judge others fairly when we have judged ourselves honestly. Jesus is warning us from falling into pride. Hypocrites are proud people. We must judge and assess ourselves first before pointing out the wrongs of others. Jesus is not teaching against making judgments. He is preventing us from becoming judgmental. Judgmentalism is making a conclusion based on incomplete information, pure assumption, speculation, and biased opinion. That's the reason why he called the people making such judgments as hypocrites. This command, however, does not teach that we must be perfectly sinless before we can correct and rebuke unrighteous acts of people, our family and friends included. Jesus is pointing out that before we focus on the faults of others, we should make sure we are not guilty of even more serious or obvious sins. As followers and believers of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must refrain from being judgmental. We must look at the lag or wood plank in our lives and remove or deal with them before looking at the speck or sawdust in others. Then Jesus said, we will be able to see clearly and make proper and fair judgments. In humility, we seek and execute righteous judgment based on truth and with all gentleness. How do we practically do this? A, assess your life periodically. Assess your life periodically. Ask yourself reflection questions. What's going on in my life today? What did I do to reflect the character of Christ among my family members, workmates, schoolmates, and neighbors today? Am I doing God's will for my life? B. Admit and confess any sin immediately. Admit and confess any sin immediately. Come clean before God and have a clear conscience every day, moment by moment. Always keep a pure heart by confessing your sins to God and asking for His forgiveness and cleansing 
as soon as the Spirit convicts you. C. Ask for forgiveness and apologize honestly. When you have realized that you have done wrong and offended or hurt someone, ask for forgiveness and apologize honestly and sincerely. Mean it from your heart. These practical steps will help us from becoming judgmental and learn to judge people fairly. My family and friends, I'm not above criticism. I do commit mistakes. I speak harsh, demeaning words at times. We are not perfect. But when we make necessary and needed judgments, we must do it with humility and sincerity in our hearts. We show love of God and apply the same grace we receive from Him. Treat people fairly by speaking the truth in love and discerning facts carefully in humility. Three, judge people discerningly. Judge people discerningly. Let's read the last portion of our passage in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Let's all be very careful in reading and interpreting this verse. Firstly, Jesus was not against animal welfare. Dogs and hogs mentioned are not the same as those that we have today. Dogs are pets and pigs are raised for livelihood and food. Dogs before were not domesticated. They were wild and ravenous scavengers. Secondly, Culturally, dogs and pigs were considered unclean animals among Jews. No Jew would take dogs as pets in their house. No Jew would ever include any pork-based food in their menu. Thirdly, dogs and pigs were prohibited from being used as animal sacrifices in the temple. Lastly, Dogs and pigs represent something unholy, impure, and unclean. Dogs and pigs represent those who are wicked and evil. The unholy and wicked people despise and reject the truth and the gospel. They do not believe in God. They continually refuse and reject the truth and are blatantly opposed to all that are of God. They are people who utterly disregard anything of God. Jesus said, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs. The pearls, or in Greek, margarites, represent all that are pure and holy. The truth, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ about the kingdom of God. He taught throughout the Sermon on the Mount. Christians were entrusted with these truths, the sacred and very valuable truths of God. We must be discerning stewards of all of them. We must not just give and share them. Sure, we must share the gospel to everybody who does not have faith in Jesus. But there are those who would utterly reject and disregard them, so do not throw pearls to them. Our proclamation and sharing of the gospel will be counterproductive and not effective if we are giving them to dogs and throwing them to the pigs. We are commanded to never ignore and reject the truth. He is telling his disciples to make such judgment and discernment when and to whom to withhold the truth from. Those people will just desecrate the truth and even attack the messengers or bearers of the gospel. It's useless and pointless to keep on speaking and giving the truth to them. 
Of course, we do that with all humility and gentleness in our hearts or else we will fall in the same judgment. Jesus teaches us to proclaim the gospel to all people to the very end of the age. However, we must also be discerning if we are still effective light and salt of this earth to these kinds of people. If people are continually rejecting the truth of the gospel and consistently disrespecting the holy things of God, then do not throw your pearls to the pigs and give the sacred truth to the dogs of this world. Never argue nor debate about the gospel and the truth of God with these kinds of people. There comes a time that the truth that you live by will be better understood and accepted by others than the one that you speak of. I repeat that. There comes a time that the truth that you live by will be better understood and accepted by others than the one that you speak of. Treat people fairly by speaking the truth in love and discerning facts carefully in humility. When I was still younger in the faith, I would share my faith and the gospel passionately to all people, especially when I started serving full-time in a missionary organization. We would share anywhere to anyone using all possible media. And praise God, because many people believed and came to faith in Jesus. Much more people rejected and did not accept God's free gift of salvation and forgiveness. As I become older in the faith and gained more wisdom, I began to discern better and determine clearer to whom and when to share the gospel. There is one lesson that I've learned in my more than 30 years of being a believer and follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. I did not or never won a single person and convince someone to come to faith in Jesus by winning a debate or an argument. I did not remember anybody whom I led to Christ by being argumentative and even winning a debate. That's why I stopped debating and arguing with those who are opposed and against the gospel and anything of God. Doon na lang po sa mga kapwa ko, pastor, mga kamanggagawa, at minsan ay miyembro ng aking pamilya na ikipagtalo at na ikipagdagate ako. Seriously speaking, my family and friends, we are commanded to share the gospel to all people and always be ready to explain our faith to those who asked us of the reason of our hope in this life, but not to those who are constantly and consistently rejecting and refusing the truth of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we close, I would like for us to have fair guidelines, how to treat people fairly. F stands for fact check before making conclusions. Fact check before making conclusions. We will only be able to treat people fairly when we determine our facts first. We don't just jump into conclusions in an instant without checking if what we saw and heard are true. Check the context of the situation and circumstance. Be certain with the words and statements mentioned. We must not also base our judgment and conclusion on mere physical and external appearances. A stands for aim for the restoration of those who fell and failed. Aim for the restoration of those who fell and failed. 
Our primary purpose is to help and restore people who have committed sin and failed. Let's guide them on how to get back to the Lord. Show the unconditional love of God, the grace that He gives, and the mercy that He grants to repentant people. I stands for inquire with humility and gentleness. Inquire with humility and gentleness. When we ask and confront people about their sins and errors, be humble and gentle so that our purpose and intention will be clearly understood. They can't determine our purpose until and unless we clearly tell them gently and show them humbly. R stands for refrain from judging people's intention and motivation. Refrain from judging people's intention and motivation. Do not immediately draw conclusions about a person's intention and motivation unless the person categorically said and declared it. People's intention and motivation are beyond us. Only the Lord sees what's inside the hearts of people. You cannot know it definitively and neither can I. Treat people fairly by speaking the truth in love and discerning facts carefully in humility. Let's close our time in a word of prayer. Lord God, you have given me and all of us the privilege of information and influence. You have entrusted us with your great truth and the ability to speak for you. It goes with awesome responsibility to discern and render judgment to what are false and evil. Much more to stand by the truth, show mercy, and uphold justice with all humility and gentleness from the Holy Spirit. May all of us be as honest and pure before you as we give judgment and uphold justice when needed and necessary. And may your grace inspire us to always be merciful and gentle toward others as we treat people fairly. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, it's a blessing to see all of you and uh, for joining us in worshiping our Lord together this morning. So as our practice, take time to reflect some more of the word and the message of the Lord for us. Identify those highlight lessons that the Lord has put and deposited in your heart and share them with our family members or growth group mates as we have fellowship later on. To all our bona fide members, we will be having a business meeting shortly. So we will be closing this Zoom room to give way to the Zoom room that we will be using for our business meeting. You can log in to join our uh, growth group fellowships at 11 o'clock because we will be opening this Zoom room again for the said purpose. God bless you.